My dear brothers and sisters, we see in the first reading the great prophet Elijah who wants to see God Yahweh like any one of us desiring to see God face to face. And God Yahweh says to Elijah, come out, come on top of the mountain there where you are. Which means Elijah was already there inside the mountain in one of those caves. He was hiding because the enemies were attacking him. And it is in that beautiful mount which is now called Mount Carmel in Israel. And that is the mount where now we have the beautiful church, the Basilica, Mount Carmel, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It is that cave where Elijah was hiding. But when Yahweh said, come, you can see me. And then Elijah takes courage and comes out of the mountain. And there he finds, as today you heard, he comes out and he sees a great strong wind of the mountains. And when he seen the wind of that mountain, he thought definitely Yahweh is going to come. But in the winds, Yahweh was not there. Then you see there was heavy sound of rocks. And there he didn't find Yahweh again. There was earthquake, thundering in a way, earthquake. And definitely he thought this earthquake, because Yahweh, the powerful, omnipotent God is coming down, it's the earth is quaking but God was not there then he was wondering where is God then and then after the earthquake you find there was fire and when there is fire we think yeah now I think God is coming full of fire and he looks for God in the fire and God is not there and then he waits he hears a gentle breeze coming and in that gentle breeze Yahweh speaks to him and there he finds the voice of God in that tiny little voice of God he could hear in that serene gentleness my dear brothers and sisters when we know that God is then, in that gentle, serene atmosphere, you and I should also look into ourselves. Because today, today what is the world like? The world is like you, any one of you. Mask world. Everybody putting mask. Why? Because we are still wanting to hear. There is no mask on our ears. We still want to hear the voice of God. But why a mask on my face? We have become too noisy. We keep screaming at each other. We are the one who are causing so much of noise. Therefore, instead of closing their ears, the Lord said, let me put a mask in people's mouth so that there will be less noise. Has not these six months been silent? Has not this mask brought you to that nothingness to hear that serene sound of the voice of God. Many people have found God during this time because something is closed within themselves. And therefore Elijah also tells each one of us you can find God in the silence of your heart. Now looking at that aspect, there is storm and waves in the boat where the disciples were. Again a storm and a wave shaking up the disciples Jesus come walking on water the calm waves the waves are gone the calm sea is there and he's walking on water and therefore you find something very important here that when you see God like this walking on water just like how Peter said Lord if it is you command me to come to you if it is not you, don't allow me to come. He knows that if it is you, he can walk on water. If it is you, I can do the impossible. Therefore in our lives, my dear friends, we can do the impossible. If it is he, if it is Jesus, 
I can do the impossible. Yes, Jesus will make you do the impossible. But how? Unless you do all the possible things in life. There are so many possible things that you are capable of doing. Don't give the possible things for God to do it. You must allow God to do only the impossible. There are possible things like coming to church. There is a possible thing like reading the word of God. There's possible things that living in peace with your family. There's all many possible things to reconcile with each other. There's so many possible things that you can do. And offer the impossible to God. Just like how Peter, if it is you Lord, command me to come. This fisherman knows he's going to sink. This fisherman knows the sea very well. And when he sees Jesus, he is encouraged to ask for the impossible. And therefore, Jesus says, come. And he walks. Did not Peter walk on water? Yes, he did walk on water. And he was so excited that he was doing the impossible. And when it gets into our head, when we are doing the impossible, we become great. And when we become great, we lose sight of the brothers and sisters of ours. Therefore, it hits our head so much that we look only up, not down. We became so noisy, the Lord has put a mask on our face so that we can now re realize our nothingness before God. And now Peter looks at, at the waves and the winds and he starts sinking. I like to tell you, my dear friends, if you have noticed or read, it is important to know that the deer runs 90 kilometers per hour. The deer runs 90 kilometers per hour. Whereas the lion runs only 50 kilometers per hour. Now, when you know the speed limits of each of these animals, why does a deer become a prayer for the lion? The deer should take off 90 kilometers per hour. You should be double the distance of the lion. And lion, which is just 50 kilometers speed it has, it always grabs its prey. The reason, my dear friends, is because the deer, when it is running fast in that 90 kilometer speed, it keeps on looking whether the lion is coming or not. Whether the lion is coming or not. Where is the lion? It goes on looking behind. The speed goes slow. Because it's looking at its enemy, because it is looking at the waves, because it is looking at the troubles, because it is looking at the sicknesses, it loses its speed. And the lion has it. Lion just is focused to have its meat. So we see Peter is taught a lesson that you must be focused, not look at the waves, not look like the deer looking behind to see whether the lion is coming or not, coming or not, and then it gets caught. Like Peter who started sinking and then he said, Lord, save me. Again, because he believed in the impossible that the Lord can do, he reaches out and saves him out and pulls him out of the waters, the troubled waters that we are in. Our Lord can pull us out of the troubled waters because he knows that we need him. And the only thing that you and I can do is to be focused and not to be a person who is unfocused. I have to focus in the Lord. I know my master is there and I can get that speed. I can destroy evil. I can remove things. And that is how our prayer is required there. To be always focused means my prayer life will keep me focused. Just like how Jesus walks on water. Before that, he was focused in his prayer because in the beginning of the gospel we see Jesus was in the mountains praying. When evening came, he was there alone. He was there seeing all the apostles alone in the boat. He comes walking. That prayer keeps him focused with his father. This prayer life of ours 
keeps us focused to our God in whom we believe. So therefore, we can tell, if it is you, Lord, command me to do it. If I'm not focused, don't ask the Lord. As long as Peter was focused, he said, if it is you, Lord, command me to walk, I will walk. If it is you, Lord, command me to leave all the evil that I am in, to leave all that attachments that I am in, to leave all those weaknesses that I am caught up with, so that I can walk to you, for which I need my prayer life, so that I am focused in the Lord. Today, my dear friends, as you go back home, when you remove your mask and relax at home, tell the Lord, help me to do the possible things in life and always ask for the impossible from Jesus. Amen. Only when you do the possible, ask for the impossible. If you are not going to do the possible, don't ask for the impossible. God bless you. Have a beautiful evening. Let us all stand for the creed.